The Rain That Wouldn't Die, A Tragic Tale of Love Gone Wrong, Science Run Amok, A Beauty With No Body, and A Beast Without A Soul. The Rain That Wouldn't Die, the musical, is a multimedia jukebox comedy, a 60-set spoof of the cult classic B-movie thriller of the same name, incorporating the original music of the era, using the actual songs, repurposing and reinterpreting them uh, from every genre possible, pop, folk, jazz, even country and western. I'm grateful, more than anything else, for this august assemblage of talent we have behind me here. Uh, it's, it's like the Avengers of comedy up here. Uh, these guys uh, are doing this uh, basically for the free bar. Because uh, let's face it, you know, they're famous and everything, but they are still actors. And he's going to buy us sushi after, too. <laughs> Act one, scene one, an operating room. I should have known. The operation was doomed to failure. The man was as good as dead when they wheeled him in here. It was foolish even to attempt it. It's impossible. No one will ever successfully transplant a living human heart. Tough luck, Dad. You did everything possible. Everything you could, Dr. Cortner. Everything except save the patient. Do you have something to say, son? Saving the patient, Dad. You did everything you could, now let me try. I think I can still save him, if it's not already too late. What are you talking about? Of course it's too late. This man is dead. A lifeless husk. Actually, he's an accountant. And he will be once again if you let me help him. Doctor, it's incredible. I've never seen anything like it. You literally brought this man back from the dead! Yes, well... Oh, Bill, I'm... I'm so proud. Jen, Jen, not here, not in front of the patient. But I... Excellent work, ladies. And, um, you. Now, close up and suture. I want this man monitored closely for the next 48 hours. Report any changes immediately and directly to me. You can all be very proud of yourselves. Today, you have helped me make medical history. Your names will be immortalized right next to mine. Well, right below mine. And mine will live forever, for I have conquered death. An awkward silence lights down on the main stage. Act one, scene two, a living room. Let's go up on stage three, minimally dressed as an early 60s living room, dominated by a large period console color TV. TV screen gradually illuminates into static and horizontal roll, resolving into the image of Gord here as Norman Newman, an impeccably quaffed TV anchorman. The news <laughs> is in progress. Construction will begin next month, and this just in. There have been unconfirmed reports this hour that medical history was made today at local County General Mercy Memorial Hospital in the world's first successful heart transplant. Chief of Surgery, Dr. William Cortner, has been unavailable for comment, though sources inside the hospital suggest that this unprecedented procedure was in fact performed by a Cortner's son, Dr. William Cortner Jr. The unnamed patient is said to be resting comfortably and has requested an extra serving of lime jello. We will continue to follow this story as it develops. Coming up after the break, African drought causes widespread famine. Guatemalan bus plunge kills 14 and local kennel fire sets dozens of puppies ablaze. All this, Debbie with the weekend weather and Dave with today's sports scores, right after this important word. Hello. Who is speaking, please? Yes, me, imbecile. Who else would it be? Well, no one else has this number. Herr Doctor, this is you? <sighs> yes, it's me. Look, we have work to do. Prepare the laboratory. I'll be there within the hour. But I thought you weren't coming up till tomorrow. Yeah, plans have changed. That last batch. I was finally able to try the serum on a patient. I brought him back to life, Kurt. Now we must re replicate that result under laboratory conditions. You mean you are finally going to fix my hand? Yes, yes, yes. Eventually. First, we have to verify my results. I have to see if we can reverse the mutation uh, effect on our original test subject. That abomination you keep locked away. It continues to mutate even now, and it's getting stronger. This morning it almost tore the door from its hinges. 
I cannot control it anymore. I fear it will kill me. <laughs> What was that? I told you. <laughs> it's trying to break free. I can't control anymore. Come, you will see now. All right, hold on, I'm coming. I'll be there as soon as I can. Oh, Bill. <laughs> My Jan. My Bill. Jan. Bill. Jan. Bill? Go. Uh, nothing. Never mind. Give me some sugar, baby. Oh, Bill. And then. They kiss. Bill, my darling, every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. I want to hold you, to kiss you, to... Bill, I want to be married. I can't stand not having you. Jen, you've been wonderful. My refuge, my rock. I'd rather be your bride. Yeah. Bill, please, I... We can't go on like this, living on stolen moments. Just a few more weeks, I promise you. Maybe a month. <laughs> or two, or two. But Bill, why? Your serum is a success. You proved it today. Soon the entire world will know of your genius. You've devoted every waking moment to the advancement of mankind. It's time, Bill. Time now for us, for you and I. Time to start a life together. Oh, Jan, 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 Jan. Bill? <laughs> Jan. Bill! Jan, please. Please, I need more time. Yes, the serum is a success, a triumph. But I'm not yet ready to share it with the world. Not just yet. There are still tests to be completed and then papers to publish, lectures to give, books to write, <laughs> cover of time, the publicity tour, Suskind, Cronkite, Huntley, Brinkley, Murph Griffin. Oh, and that new guy, Carson. But, Bill, it's just that I've waited so long. And I'm asking you to wait just a little longer. But... Hush, now. But... Shh! <laughs> we can talk about this later. I have to get back to my lab. Whatever you say, Bill. Good. We'll take your car. Grab... <laughs> Sorry. Give me the cue. <laughs> Whatever you say, Bill. Good. We'll take your car. Grab my bag there, will you? <laughs> We're turning now to local news. A car accident on a desolate, bleak, and somehow lonely stretch of country road has claimed the life of an unidentified woman. Positive identification of the body has been hindered by the fact that it was burned beyond recognition and that the victim's head is mysteriously missing. Police are now combing the surrounding area and are advising cottagers heading north for the weekend to stick to the main roads and highways. But it's impossible. Unnatural, she can't be alive. Not, not like this. What you see is real. What's done is done and what I've done is right. The serum is a success, Kurt. I've proved it today. And now I can use it to save her life. Bill? Oh, Bill, slow down, Bill. We're going to burn. Burning? I'm burning up. I'm on fire. Bill! 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 Jan fully wakes with a start, her eyes wide open, looks around frantically as much as she can with the restraints holding her head in place. She looks down and panic, fear, horror, and confusion play across her face. Bill! What? Where? Where am I? Where is the rest of me? Bill looks back at her sheepishly, shrugs his shoulders, and extends his hands, palms up in a wordless, what can I say? <laughs> Why, you couldn't. How could you? I thought you loved me. But, Jan, it's because I love you. I can make you whole again. Stop it. If you really loved me, you would have just let me die. Oh, Bill, I gave you my heart. And you stuck it in a jar. I need, I want your body. Boy, <laughs> you don't waste any time. I like that. I mean, who needs sweet talk? You can trust me. I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah, real smooth operator. <laughs> hey, you know, I've got a cozy little place not too far from here. Okay, listen.
this and put a lid on that and set it on simmer, hop sink, because I got another set to do. <laughs> but I'm off in a couple of hours. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. What, 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 what's the rush? You, you, you're not getting nervous now, are you? I'm, I'm over 21. No, no, it isn't that. It's just, I'm a, well, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I have, I, uh, I've got a sick friend. Oh, yeah, I'll just bet you do, Ben Casey. <laughs> Come on now, Mona's got everything you need right here. Yeah, I'm, um, uh, it's just, I, uh... He gets up and starts to the edge toward the door, backing right into the cheap brunette as she sweeps in breezily and brazenly through the beheaded, or the be the bed, the beaded curtain. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all about heads here, isn't it? Startled, <laughs> Bill jumps back a step. He is trapped between them. Hey! What's a girl got to do to get a little privacy? So who died and made you queen bee? It's my dress room too, you know. Yeah? So what are you waiting for? Dress already? Then beat it. Can't you see I've got company? Mm, we've met. Yeah. Hi. Hey there yourself, lover boy. I thought we had something there, you know. What say we ditch this dump and go have ourselves a little party? Increasingly wary of drawing attention, Bill edges away toward the fire exit. Crossing to the makeup table mirror, the cheap brunette casually drops and steps out of her dress so that she is now stripped down to her corset, fishnet, stockings, and heels. She smiles coquettishly over her shoulder at Bill. Claws off, vampire! Two's company, and neither one of them is you, so blow! Oh, yeah, I saw him first! Yeah, look, well, uh, oh, I better get going. By now, back right up close to the fire exit, Bill turns to leave. He's reaching for the door handle when Mona grabs him by the other arm. You can't go, baby, not now. Not when you got me feeling so good. He pulls away and opens the fire exit door. Yeah, sorry, ladies, maybe some other time. But count on it, Dreamboat. Come back any time and we'll pick up where we left off. Don't worry, I'll remember. I never forget a face. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. And... Act one, scene 11. Meanwhile, back at the lab. <laughs> Jan is only now becoming truly conscious and aware. Over the course of the play, her appearance will gradually grow darker, more disheveled, and increasingly severe, reflecting her state of mind. Bill? Bill? Bill, where are you? Where am I? What happened to... Why can't I turn my head? <laughs> Bill! What... How? Bill? Bill? Kurt, what? Kurt, still in his pajamas, runs in from the adjacent bedroom. What is it? Who? Oh, it's you. <laughs> What's the matter? Got a headache? <laughs> headache! Get it? What? <laughs> Who are you? Where am I? Where is Bill? 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 Stop it. Stop! It! Enough with the screaming! Some of us are trying to sleep. Who are you? Where am I? Why can't I move? And where is Bill? Questions, questions. I am Kurt. I work with your Bill here in this laboratory. And the reason you can't move is <laughs> that there is nothing left to move. <laughs> You've got nobody. It's gone. Kaput. Gornschnicht. <laughs> All burnt up. From the neck down, nothing. Now go back to sleep. No! No! No, it's not possible. Alive without a body? What, what have you done to me? I should be dead. Dead, do you hear? Let me die. Let me die. 